Hello, how's it going? Look, a bit of a weird one in this video. I'm going to be playing with some unsafe code. Now, the reason for this, the motivation is, let's say we're doing something like data-oriented design. We want to create our own custom data structures, right? Let's say, for instance, we don't like the underlying implementation or we want to structure the data in a certain way that makes it friendly for SIMD or something like that. Basically, we're dealing with allocating memory. Um, but the example that I'm going to do is a custom vector. So I'm just going to first up make this a little bit bigger. Is that too big? Who knows? Um, but first up, I'm going to declare my struct. Make it generic. Now, what I'm going to use is three things. First up, I'm going to have a pointer, basically the array, the underlying data. Then I'm going to have a size and capacity. This is pretty much the common implementation. Now, just a side note, I'm not going to go through a full implementation because I was lazy in writing my test code. So I'm just going to make a vector that we can add to. That's it. But hopefully this will be feature complete enough to the point where you could jump in and add other functionality. But anyway, alrighty, now let's have a look at the implementation block. Now, because this is a generic, we'll have to pass in the parameter. But yeah, to start with, we'll have our constructor. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm um, just setting up an empty vector. Now I'm going to need to allocate some chunk of memory. So I'll have a pointer there. And then I want to do something like this. I want to do something like um, std alloc. We have this alloc option and this takes a layout. So the layout explicitly states the number of bytes to allocate and the byte alignment to use. So we can go ahead and create that up above. Start with std alloc layout. And then, like I said, we need the size and alignment. So I'll go ahead and create those. I'm going to use the current capacity but this needs to be the number of bytes. So we go std memory and then size of, and this is a little bit funky, but we want the size of that type parameter. And that's how we do it. And then I'm gonna get the alignment. This is pretty similar. We'll go std memory and then, yeah, align of, and then just like before, a generic parameter. Okay, so then we can get that layout by putting in the byte size and the alignment. And there's something I missed. I'm using the wrong using the wrong thing here. This is actually from oops, sorry. Layout. The autocomplete just really isn't being friendly today, is it? There we go. Okay, cool. So we get there. Yeah, so the next thing I'll need is, this is all taking it fine, but it's unsafe. So we can just go ahead and wrap that up. Like I said, I'll be doing a lot of unsafe code today just like that. And now this is complaining because it does want me to return struct. And I'll just, because this will give me basically a void pointer, which is a mutable pointer to uh, characters, U8s. I'll just cast this. So I'll say as mutable pointer to type T. Okay, so we got there in the end. 
Now, as we use this thing, everything's all fine, except that we're now using raw memory, which means that everything which is created also needs to be freed or deallocated. So I'm going to make another function, which is my destructor. And there's probably a, a neat way to automatically do this, but well, it's, it's box, right? It's smart pointers, but I'm not doing that today. Okay, so I'm just going through the normal stuff, getting the layout of the vector's memory. What I'm going to do now is destroy that. So I'll go standard allocator dealloc. And the way this works is it takes in a pointer and a layout. So for the pointer, I'll put in self data. And again, I'm going to need to cast that to a void pointer. Now, another operation I'm going to need to do with this vector is as I add more elements to it, it's going to need to grow. And a pretty standard strategy here is to double the size of the allocation every time. It's not perfect, but it's what I'll do. So I'll have a private function called resize. And this will be sort of similar to what I'm doing here. So resize will basically reallocate the data and copy over existing elements. Now, if you've done C programming, you would know that the realloc function basically does this. So, so far so good. We're just going through, we're getting things exactly as they are. So what I'll do is I'll use the realloc function and the way the realloc function goes, ah, oh geez, it would be great if they actually showed, like, instead of just showing an error, show what you actually need to put in. Okay, great. So, first up, we have the pointer that we're reallocating, which will be our data casts to a void pointer. Then we'll need the layout of the existing data, which is what we set up above. And then we'll need the new size, which is double the existing size. And then we'll just need to cast that to a T pointer. And then after that we've done that, we'll need to set our capacity to be doubled. Nice. So these three methods sort of fit in pretty nicely. We can allocate memory, we can deallocate memory, and we can reallocate memory. Now we could do this explicitly as two steps, one where we allocate new memory, then copy over and then deallocate the old memory, but this does all of that. Okay, so the next one that I'm putting in, I'm just putting in for debug purposes. It will make things a lot nicer, and that is to, uh, be able to print a vector. So this will pretty much just be a whole bunch of macros. So we want to print out a header and then the size and capacity. And then the vector elements. Now this bit's going to be a little bit funky. Basically what I want to do is I want to insert the element, a comma, and then a space. And in something like C, we would do something like this. And then, so the I will access the element, but Rust doesn't like this. So what we can do instead is we can increment the pointer by an offset of I, which takes in the element size, takes the element size into account, and then dereference where that pointer is pointing to. Now it's still not gonna like this, and the reason it's not gonna like this, yeah, first up it's unsafe, so okay, let's go ahead and wrap that. Secondly, we don't really have a, a format display 
option. Because we're dealing with a generic data type, we don't necessarily know that this is something we can print. It totally is in our example, but in general, we don't know this. So we can specify that option there to attempt to print it basically, but then we also need that generic type to be restricted to a generic type, which can implement the debug trait. The debug trait basically means it can be displayed, it can be printed. We can specify this by going up to the type parameter, specifying that we're using debug. You can see up above it's implemented format debug. And then furthermore, in this implementation block, also further specifying that we are using debug. Okay, and now we're trusting that whatever we're putting into this vector can be printed out to the screen. Okay, so we're almost done. We can start having fun soon. What do you mean? We're always having fun. But the next function is pushing. So I'll make a public function named push. So before we push, we'll make sure that we are within size. So we could do a simple if statement because we're just growing by one. But in the interest of defensive programming, I'll do a while statement. So while our size is bigger than or equal to our capacity, we're going to need to resize. Assuming now that we are big enough, we'll do the same trick as before. So we'll take our data. We'll go right to the end of the array. Well, not the end, but the end of the writable region. Dereference that and set that to value. And then finally, we'll increment size by one. Okay, so this is just a simple example, but it does have enough functionality that later on we could go in, we could add pop, we could add get, set, these sorts of things. And we could make other sorts of data structures like hash maps or linked lists, I guess, just whatever you want, doesn't matter. So now let's write some test code. Nice and simple. So let's give this a go, see what happens. Oh, there's one thing that I've missed here, and that is in the print function. So I started this bracket off to begin the data chunk, but I'll need to end it as well. Okay, cool. So as you can see, we start off with a completely empty vector, which has space for one element. We stick an element on and we stick another one on. And every time our size matches our capacity and then we try to push one on again, we double the size. So now the capacity goes up to four and then the capacity goes up to eight. And as you can see, that uninitialized memory has some random stuff in it. So it's probably not a great idea to exceed the bounds, but we can add those checks ourselves as we extend the class. And yeah, there we have it. So just a quick one today, a little bit esoteric, I guess, but just wanted to have some fun. Um, yeah, all the best, keep coding, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.